All right, guys. Doing a video today on checkmates, uh, and particularly how to spot the opportunity or the threat of checkmates. So I've been going through a lot of my recent games and a lot of my older games because I'm building a course on chess tactics, and uh, I've played uh, played a bunch of Blitz games last night as I was falling asleep, and then I've been through some other recent ones, and I've come up with six games all of which have a variety of checkmates in them. And it's really, really important to be able to spot the opportunity of a checkmate. Now, if it's an opportunity for you, you need to be able to capitalize on it. But likewise, to be able to spot when your opponent might have a checkmate, because it can, you know, as I say so often, you can't win a game of chess if you've been checkmated, if, you, if, you're, if you've already lost it. So I've got six games now. We'll go through them fairly quickly, but um, and then try and identify, we'll get to that, that final stage and the crucial crux point where you need to be able to spot the, the mating opportunity. So in the first one, I'm playing a player rated in the 1300s. It's a five minute blitz game, okay? So we have the French, fairly standard and um, I play the f6 advance and then knight to h6 inviting the bishop to take he takes this helps open up the g file and there's a bit of a threat of the of the pawn coming in but it's not too bad I've got it covered with rooks and now some exchanges Queen threatens the pawn, so I advance the pawn. Queen comes in, and this is looking pretty dangerous right now, but in fact, the rooks have the back rank covered, even though there's a a queen there, a queen and a rook, and a pawn that can queen. So, but if, if queen takes and rook takes and pawn takes and turns into another queen, doesn't matter, rook takes, um, even if rook takes, king takes. So I'm actually this this square is defended three times and attacked three times, so we're good. Knight comes in in defence. Queen swap off. And we'll just whiz through. So the rooks are now threatening to come in, but I've I've got these two pretty much covered. And now I'm thinking at this point, my opponent only has 23 seconds left on the clock. Okay, it's a blitz game. Uh, material is equal. I've got 1 minute 48. And I'm thinking, I know what I'll do. I'm very clever. I'm going to go and hide my king behind his pawns. And he's now down to 20 seconds. What's he going to do? 11 seconds now on the clock. Right, I push h4. Can you see the final move of the game? This is beautiful. It's a beautiful checkmate. Knight to c6. Covers the king. King can't go there because of the pawn. And the knight is also covering that square as well. So absolutely stunning little checkmate. I simply failed to notice it. My king had enough protection around him. Um, there was plenty I could do. Obviously, I can't capture this pawn either. So kudos to my opponent on that game. Let's move on to game number two. Okay, so here we are, and uh, this is a Danish gambit, and I'm playing with white pieces. Knight comes out, so so he declines the gambit and instead brings his knight out. So I advance the pawn. You cannot, cannot, cannot play the knight here, because this move wins the knight. Knight's got nowhere to, nowhere to go. So the knight is forced to retreat to e7. This is an ugly position now for um, for black already. If you look at this, his, his knight is blocking in his, his queen and his dark squared bishop and taking one square away from his other knight. I've already got two nice pawns out in the board and a knight on its natural square. So black is looking a little uh, cramped. So I'm trying to complete development. Bishop comes in with an attack, maybe inviting an exchange. Black's not interested in that, so I initiate the exchange and he's forced to uh, recapture with the pawn. It's not too bad recapturing with the f-pawn because it opens up 
semi-open file for his rook. Now I counter strike with f4. There's uh, some tension. <coughs> There's some tension between the knights here. Now in, in the middle of the board, knight takes, pawn takes. I lift my rook. Rook comes across to protect b2. Rook comes across there. I kick the queen away. Attack the pawn a second time. Pawn takes pawn. Rook takes pawn. Queen goes back to the back rank. Now bishop takes pawn. So clearly there's a threat here of taking on d6 with a fork on both rooks. So black interposes his bishop. We exchange bishops. So now we have a situation where white is one pawn up. Black's got these slightly awkward pawns around his king. And now we're looking at maybe this, this weak pawn here on g6. Exchange rooks now. And lovely, strong pawn structure here. There's uh, about two minutes left on the clock for each of us. And now queen there. And this is a total blunder. Can you spot the end of the game and why? So I think on the computer, white is like two and a half points up at this point in time. So I've got this lovely pawn structure. I just need to grind out the win. Right, so the first move, queen to b6. Queen to c5 would have been just as good if you spotted that. Okay, this puts the king in check. And the king obviously cannot escape there, and his pawns are in the way here, so there is only two possible moves. Now clearly rook to f2 would be catastrophic, because you've got queen takes, and then king would have to move to h1. So king there, and then boom the rook comes in with mate. So it all came down to this move. This move put the rook in the firing line of black's rook, right? But what I failed to notice was that the queen could have come to any of these squares uh, with check. Blocking with the pawn was useless. It would, the queen would just capture the pawn, right? And because there's only one escape square for the king, Right. If I'd have moved one of these pawns at any point, I'd have been fine. Yeah. So this forces the king to move away from the defender. And there you go, back rank uh, mate. So it just goes to show, even if you're up in material, as we'll see in, in other games, if, if you're in a dominant position in the game, you can still lose very, very suddenly. Right, let's move on to the next one. Okay, this is over in 14 moves. This is with my buddy Chestesterone in India. Um, so I'm playing with the white pieces, e4, Sicilian, slow Sicilian, um, knight comes out. Let's move through fairly quickly. Okay, so we have a knight sacrifice on f7. The king captures the knight, so now the king can't castle. Um, this rook's looking a bit behind, but white's also behind on development as well at this point. F captures knight. So really, I think uh, black failed to spot that the knight was under attack here. But in fact, actually the knight's pinned. Knight's pinned by the rook, so not much black can do. Captures, bishop captures, and now queen into h5. And this is just simply a massive blunder. Black is not in a bad position. He's one point behind. He's got 10 minutes still on the clock. Queen takes rook on e8 is, is a simple mate. The king should simply have moved to f8. Would have been fine. Protecting the, the rook. So like in the previous game, um, the king's moving away from its defender, opening himself up to a back rank mate, uh, but in this case it was completely unforced. Next one. Okay, now I'm playing with the black pieces against the, an 1140 rated player who starts with the English. I play d6. So 
So he's got a nice big pawn structure. He's got a lot of space here. Um, so I'm playing like a uh, a black lion here. And I'll grab the knight. So now we've got, notice, a completely open G file. Don't you see that? Totally open. So I bring my knight in. This is the, the square where I want to get the knight in the black lion. Knight comes round. I'm not too concerned. This is this is a total blunder. I completely blunder a piece at this point. Don't know why I did that. It's totally undefended. Um, I just failed to spot. And I've got 19 minutes on the clock, for goodness sake, right? Failed to spot that the queen was guarding that. So now I'm down a complete knight. Right, so queen comes out with check. Knight blocks. I castle. So there's a, a check from the, the bishop. King has to move. That's fine, because uh, black's only got a light square bishop, so I put my king on the dark square. And now, this is kind of inexplicable, really. You should never <laughs> castle your king onto a completely open file. The G file is totally empty. And white decides that the king is safer over there with my rooks than it is... It's like choosing between two tiger sharks and the great white, really, isn't it? Okay, so rook across to g8. And now bishop blocks. Now the queen comes in to join the fun. And again, just another complete blunder. Uh, white is completely up in materials, a whole piece ahead. And just somehow blacks out on, on this. Uh, completely failing to see that there's a simple checkmate threat on the, the second rank. So there you go. doesn't matter being ahead in material. doesn't matter if you're thinking about your own attacking ideas. If you let your guard down just a little bit, it can be catastrophic. Next game. <clears throat> okay, here I'm playing with the black pieces against the player rated uh, 1026. So he starts with d4, and uh, I'm here play the Dutch. Knight out, d6. I've not been playing the Dutch as much recently. I found I'm getting better results with the black lion against 1d4. So, bishop has to come back here to protect this pawn. Now, th this is this is a bad move. This is a bad move by white because it invites e5. Black really, really wants to play e5 in the Dutch. Okay, so now that kicks the bishop. Now I kick the knight. Now a queen out. So I'm starting to think about attacking this side of the board, should white decide to castle that side of the board. Now I push e4, kicking the other knight. There's an exchange of bishops, knight has to move, I capture, and the e-pawn now moves away. Queen comes across to attack the undefended e-pawn, and now white uh, castles queen side. So I start pushing my pawns up the queen side because my king's on the other side of the board. Queen comes across attacking the loose pawn here on f2. And uh, g3 is pushed to defend it. Come back with a check. King moves across. Okay, so so far, nothing too spectacular. Knight comes down to attack g7. Uh, I make a pawn move, so I'm nothing to uh, defend that. But anyway, um, white takes on Passant. I capture with a knight. Knight takes d6 now and there's some maneuvering so now I'm, re I'm really trying to open up this this side of the board my king's relatively safe okay queen in line with the king is principled I let go of another pawn yep white gladly accepts it now I come in and capture the pawn on c4 and obviously this is lining up the potential of a uh, discovered attack. So for example, knight to a3 would come with check and would therefore win white's queen. So what does white do? Capture the rook. I recapture with a rook. Same deal. Still in that threat. Okay. Now, let's look at the board. White has six pawns. Black has three pawns. Um, and white is also at the exchange because white has two rooks. 
whereas black only has a rook and a minor piece. So you would say at this point that uh, white is in a, a very winning position, still got just under four minutes on the clock. So I, I advance my queen, but this now allows white's queen to come in with a fork, and it's an unstoppable fork. I have to move my king, so my rook falls. So now I'm nine points behind in material. And this is one of those points in, in any game where you have to go, okay, now I am in a winning position. All I need to do is not lose, right? And this game is mine. So this is why I say when, when, you're, when you're losing, when you've blundered a piece, you really need to stop, slow down, take stock. But just as much when you're winning and you've just secured a completely dominating advantage, you have to do exactly the same thing. Slow down, take stock, and particularly make sure you don't lose. I mean, really, white at this point could uh, exchange his queen for my knight and probably still win, because he got a pawn advantage as well. So I move my king out of the way. Queen comes in with another check. King back there. Queen checks again. King to here. Queen down there again. King to there. <laughs> Right, so we have a lot of dancing around. More checks, okay. Look at this, look, look at where this king ends up, right? He's just running around all over the board. Black, black is in a world of pain at this point. Okay, another check, and now here, crucially, white runs out of checks. Yes, okay, in theory, could play uh, queen to b4, but that would be taken by the pawn or the queen or the king or queen to a3, but that would mean queen takes knight. And that's devastating, so he's run out of checks. And also crucially, white is under the, a checkmate threat. So is forced to play this, because clearly, without checks, what's gonna happen? Queen takes b2, and that'll be checkmate. Okay, it doesn't matter what your material advantage is, if the material isn't available to help defend you, too bad. I mean, here at this point, could even have maybe thought about sacrificing the rook, I don't know. Anyway, so pushes the pawn, queen advances, but it's, it's too slow, too little, too late, and the queen comes in with a checkmate. So uh, white at this point is eight points in front in terms of material, but gets checkmated. All right, next one. I'm playing here, this is a five minute blitz game against somebody rated 1286. E4 and then C6, so we've got the Karo Khan. I play knight to F3, that's not the most principal move, it should really be D4. Grab the centre. Uh, D5 is played, I push my pawn, bishop comes out. So he's got now almost like a reverse London setup going on here. So I've now developed all of my minor pieces, so good start, and then the queen, and then castles. So I've now completed development, whereas black is three moves away. So black has still got to, uh, in fact probably four moves away, still got to develop the dark squared bishop, but can't because there are, there's no diagonal for it. Still got to develop the, um, the queen and castle, right? So I definitely have the initiative at this point in time. Black now plays another pawn move. So he's now moved six of his eight pawns. I manoeuvre my knight round towards the king side because I cannot imagine the king wanting to go in that direction. Uh, this is maybe not an ideal move. Right, it's a not yet another pawn move. Did a video recently where my opponent made six pawn moves on his first six moves and uh, you can just see how weakening it is. So I capture with a bishop, and now black captures inwards with the g-pawn. But you can see now there really is no safe place for the king to go, and also there's a very dangerous hole in black's defense now, uh, which you might be able to spot. So my knight comes into h5, and what's the idea? The idea is clearly Knight to f6, covering both those squares, and that would be an awesome checkmate. Okay, now the knight moves, 
meaning that the queen is guarding this square and also crucially uh, the king has another square it can go to so it can now go to e7 I come in with my knight anyway and the king is forced to go there I mean it's either that or trade the queen for a knight and can you see the winning move now for white 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 to move and win and it's not a checkmate but it's pretty much it leads to a checkmate okay if you're ready queen to b4 check now look at this situation uh, the king can't go onto either of these light squares because of the knight knights covering those squares can't go here because of the queen and the pawn okay so the only options left are to push the pawn in which case queen takes check again push the queen in which case queen takes protected by the pawn and that's checkmate so very very sudden this is a 15 move uh, end of the game um, <clears throat> so I, I think that's it's it's painful when you get when you're on the receiving end of, of one of these sudden checkmates like I've, I've shared in a few of these games today that um, we, we all get stung by and it obviously it happens more in blitz and faster games than it does on longer ones but all of us I think really need to develop these spider senses when you're in attack you need to spot the opportunities and know when to jump on them and to grab them right but when you're in when you're defending uh, you, you always need to be open to these these checkmate threats and like we've seen in, in a couple of the games even when you're way way ahead of material never ever forget king safety never stop looking for a checkmate threat because it's it's one of the most forcing things yes you and the difference is that like we say that a check is the ultimate forcing move because your opponent has to get out of check on their next turn if they can right but a checkmate threat is different because you don't even have to announce it right you can go ahead and make any move you like because legally any legal move right when you're in check you can't even make another move but when there's a checkmate threat one or two moves away right you you're allowed to do whatever you want so it's it's easier to miss a checkmate threat than it is a check in many ways so yeah really be thinking about this make it part of your mental checklist right <clears throat> is there a checkmate threat or is there a checkmate opportunity on the board right now okay and and that's that's what the you know really good players do yes they're thinking about pawn structure yes they're thinking about strategy and and that kind of thing but so much of this is is tactics chess really is 99 percent tactics um so make it part of your your mental checklist that you do what's what's undefended what are the opportunities you know can i see a fork can i see a pin can i see a skewer and in particular are there checkmate opportunities are there checkmate threats i hope this has been useful for you definitely for me i've, I've learned a lesson i'll see you soon